Also, we were talking downstairs before we came in about the, um, the ways in which you think that masculinity is, masculinity, in a sense, is, is called into question. This is a discussion about feminism, truth and lies, but this is also has to be a conversation about masculinity and what that might mean. So you can answer either of those. You can forget about the happiness and just do the masculinity. <laughs> the, we? Well, the happiness project one, I think, is, is part of the earlier piece of the backlash. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the idea that, uh, you know, Ariana Huffington, again, has done the third metric that we should be measuring our lives and our, our success or achievement, or whatever word you want, in terms of what makes us fulfilled. Uh, and the answer to that is rarely just another rung on the career ladder or more, more money or more power. It is, it is the sum total of our relationships as human beings uh, and, and, and our appreciation of beauty. And you know, I get more pleasure watching my birds at the bird feeder every morning than through countless things I do later in the day. I'm going to make time to do that, or my first mm -hmm. cup of coffee, or you know, the site of the Princeton campus, which is one of the most beautiful places in the world. So I think that, again, is just, that's just the pendulum sw swinging back, and we, mm -hmm. we do need it. We've gotten way, way, way out of whack. Um, men and masculinity. Yeah. So this is a new book, right? This is, this is what I'm writing about in my book, yeah. uh, and is the sister of two brothers and the mother of two sons, particularly as the mother of two sons, I think about this a lot. Um, and this goes exactly to truth and lies because as feminist women, we want to be equal. But if you say to us, yeah, but you know what? Male CEOs have full-time caregivers at home. Find me a male CEO who has a family who has a wife or a partner who is not the lead caregiver. I defy you to find me that person. So then you say to the same women, so if we want to be CEOs, yes, we're superhuman and all that stuff, but you know what? Actually, you can't really expect us to do 24-7 jobs any differently than the guys do. So if we're going to be there and we're going to be in those top positions, we need a lead caregiver at home, as I have. My husband obviously has a full-time job, that's great, but he's the lead parent because I could not be the lead breadwinner if he were not the lead parent. I simply couldn't. Somebody's got to be home. I mean, even at 15 and 7, actually, particularly at 15 and 17, somebody has to be home. Yeah, right. Uh, as we discovered, we saw the doll's house last night, we came home, our 15-year-olds had been home alone, somebody ought to be home. <laughs> so... The place was trash. A bit. <laughs> Pizza boxes, we, we won't go there. Uh, but so, but with, so then you say, okay, so you want to be the CEO or the president of the university or the surgeon or the scientist, whatever. You've got to marry somebody who is willing to support you in the, in the homework, the family work, in the way he's going to support you, believe me. You're not going to be able to do what you want to do without him, but that's probably what you're going to have to do. And maybe you'll trade off, but he's going to have to do that part of the time. And at that point, many women get off the bus. They don't want to marry a guy like that. They don't think a guy like that is masculine. Indeed, the guys who do that, I know I'm in Brooklyn, and Brooklyn is the home of, you know, Brooklyn gives the lie to all this. There are more stay-at-home uh, dads here than probably anywhere else uh, in the U.S., uh, or work-from-home dads, or, or lead caregiver dads, or however you want to put it. But in most places in the U.S., those dads report that the women they engage with on the, uh, you know, on the playground think they're a little odd. Do not think of them as a model of masculinity. We can't have it both ways, right? Just right, as right. I was told growing up, you know, <clears throat> don't, be, don't be too smart. You know, you don't, uh, don't be too smart around a guy. He won't want you. Well, right, that, that vision of femininity had to change. It had to change. Guys had to think that women who were powerful and smart and competitive were attractive, because otherwise we couldn't do it. Well, you know what? We have to think that a guy who puts his family first, that a guy who says, no, you know, I want to be the lead parent. You know, I'm going to defer a promotion. I'm not going to be the most powerful guy out there. We have to say, you are a masculine, valued, wonderful man. And if we can't get there, 
we are not going to make this kind of change. Because we've gotten as far as we can get without doing that. We've got 15% of unbelievable super women who get really lucky, right, or who have a lot of money, uh, or who are just really superhuman, who managed to make it work, but we're not going to get further than that. So it's really about changing the way we think about it. It's not only, but a lot of it is about changing how we think about men and what we think a masculine, attractive guy is. That's the question for the coming generation, as it were. Yep. That's, that's going to, okay.